Welcome to video 5 on 3 controller 10 gold. In this episode let's have a look how we can modify the user interface to create something to our personal taste. If we don't touch anything uh, this is sort of the standard display and color scheme that you get out of the box. Uh, in my previous layout I uh, had something like this, a little bit more color. Uh, the train table here at the right, uh, four throttles nicely lined up. And uh, well, let's have a look how we can manage something like this. If we head to the view menu, there we find the user interface style. And over there we can change the entire color scheme with one click. So let's just do one example. There are quite a few options available. Let's do Windows 7 style. And well, all the colors change and now we have this. In case you have a larger layout, you may require maximum uh, real estate on the switchboard. Um, well, that can be done. There are a couple of things that we can move out of the way. For instance, we have here this window toolbar. In the view menu, the toolbar section over here, I can click that away. If I seldom use it, why not just hide it? Uh, here at the bottom we have a status bar. Well, what I also did is uh, make my window bar uh, auto height. That gives me more real estate already. The status bar here at the bottom, which says my uh, system is running or online and offline. I can also hide that one. It gives me again uh, a centimeter more real estate. Of course, it is always possible to shrink the symbol size over here. Uh, I now have it at maximum. Uh, oh, I should first uh, activate this window. Yeah, uh, I can make it smaller. Uh, but even in, in, the, in some very large layout, at the very smallest setting, which I personally not even like because we can't even read it anymore, uh, yeah, you can still need some more real estate. Well, the biggest uh, thing that is in the way is the engine and train window. Why not simply click it to activate it and drag it away? Okay, it's, it's now moving in space, but that's not looking very neat and tidy. Uh, what we see if I move it away is that we have this little icon here. And if I move my mouse on that icon, I get this blue uh, square or rectangle that shows me if I now let go, here it will end up. Uh, that only happened, by the way, because this window is so-called dockable. If we click this tiny little arrow, we see this window is dockable. And those, are, those icons only appear with a dockable window. Uh, there are a couple more options. You can make a window floating, uh, which means you can leave it everywhere you like, even outside of the uh, train controller window, which is now maximized. But let me uh, not maximize it. We see that this window behaves like a normal Windows window. And I could even place it on a second monitor, which can be very interesting if you make the uh, switchboard itself which is now a, uh, a window that is topped. Uh, can I change that? Yeah, right click it and uh, make it floating. Now my whole switchboard is a floating window. If I have a second monitor, I can place it on that monitor and have the largest possible uh, uh, switchboard panel and then the train controller and the other windows can, can run on another monitor. That's all possible uh, using this little arrow. Personally, I prefer my switchboard and also the um, uh, dispatcher window, this one, uh, to be topped documents. And well, let's enlarge this one again. I always place, if I have room, uh, uh, my, my table at the dockable, make it dockable uh, table, I place it here at the right. 
And now what we can also do is, for instance, uh, make this train window dockable and this one also and combine them nicely together. Uh, look, I get that uh, icon again. Yeah, now it is one window and if I enlarge it or shrink it, it neatly, tidy and neatly uh, makes these two throttles the same size. Uh, I can move it over here and place it over here uh, and there we have a very uh, tidy layout. I still have some real estate left. Uh, well, why not create another window there? Let's go to the window menu. A window that is always very handy is a traffic control window. Let's make that dockable and place it over here. And another window that can be helpful, especially when your uh, layout is not yet fully 100% ready, but you are still working on it, is an inspector window. Uh, where did that end up? Over here. Uh, let's make it dockable. Oh, it already is. Uh, and let's move it over there. What does it do? Well, it shows everything. If you click a block, uh, uh, the, the uh, traffic window shows everything that is driving in that block and also shows these markers and when they are triggered. And the inspector window shows all the details of this block. Uh, so that is uh, yeah interesting when you are uh, editing your layout and figuring out how things should work. Let's finally also move uh, this guy out of the way. Let's place it here as long as we need it. Of course, when we really start driving, uh, we don't need that thing, that simulator window. Um, well, this was it. Oh, we, we even can create more real estate by uh, moving away this whole ribbon. Uh, simply uh, right click it and then say minimize the ribbon. And now we really have the maximum real estate that we can get. And the ribbon still is here. Uh, when you click one of the menus, it opens again. And if you uh, want to get rid of it, just click in an empty space. Uh, so this for normal operation, when your whole layout is finished and you don't have to edit uh, that much anymore, uh, this is how you can work. And then uh, yeah, a large layout will probably fit over here. Next video, we'll talk a bit more about the uh, switchboard and the dispatcher window, because we can also change the look and feel of those. And uh, then we can also change the look and feel of these train windows. So maybe see you back there and in the meantime, have fun.